Welcome to the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions, now in its 26th season. Our panel features a longtime Penn State media and Nitwits tag team. Neil Verdell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ's Ryan Risky. And each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning by Reed and Solani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Brent Kogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By Novacare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs, candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Harry's Construction, if you can dream it, we can create it. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Penn State returns home to Beaver Stadium to take on Indiana after a rough loss to Ohio State. And this one came down to the wire with Drew Aller firing a game-winning touchdown pass to Keandre Lambert-Smith. We discuss a 33-24 win next on Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back into another edition of Nittany Nation Overtime. I'm Ryan Risky, joined by Mark Brennan, Neil Rudell, and former Nittany Lion place kicker Massimo Manka. And guys, there's a lot to unpack from this win against <laughs> Indiana. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, my routine usually is, uh, especially for noon games, go home, you know, watch the broadcast, see what's said, get a, obviously a better look at it than you do from way upstairs. And, you know, I did that, and I, I think it even looked worse <laughs> you know there were just were so many situations that I think they raised more questions than they answered I don't think they were ready to play uh, they clearly made a play when they had to um, uh, but they were fortunate and I think one thing that you factor in is the caliber of opponent that this happened against you know two uncharacteristic defensive breakdowns we did see Drew Aller fire that game-winning touchdown pass after throwing his first interception Except there's just, as you said, a lot more questions than answers. And you just kind of start wondering, you know, did some of the lingering from the Ohio State loss carry over into this game? I'd like to welcome Neil back to the show yeah. after his uh, brief hiatus <laughs> following. <laughs> Thank after you. After so broken up over the Ohio State game. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Listen, uh, w what did James Franklin tell us last week? He said, with a game like Ohio State where it's so emotional, we saw players crying, uh, y you know how difficult that was for them. You can't let that team beat you twice. And it's crazy. They identified the problem, and yet they still nearly let that team beat them twice. With all due respect to, to, to Indiana, this yeah. may be the worst team in the Big Ten. And to come out and play that way, I think just is really disappointing that they weren't able to put that Ohio State game in the rearview mirror. The offense struggled again. The defense, I guess maybe they were due for a letdown. The one saving grace, I would say, and this is why we have Massimo here, 
special teams play pretty well yeah. overall for the second yeah. straight week. And I don't know that that necessarily carried them, but overall, I don't know how you come out of that game thinking uh, anything other than, whoo, lucky to uh, survive. And now on to Maryland, which seems like it's having its own issues. Yeah, and listen, I'm glad that I'm here after a win. <laughs> so, uh, Absolutely. We were all wondering what was happening there at the end of the in fourth quarter when Drew first, uh, you know, threw his first interception and then, my goodness, Indiana had us. You know, they had the opportunity to make an impact. And we talked about it earlier, we're lucky that the coach was so conservative. I don't understand, we all don't understand why he decided to run the ball three straight times. And obviously he had some success throwing the ball. So we kind of dodged a bullet there. And Maxwell, you brought up that Drew threw it through his first interception. Do you guys think maybe it was a good thing for him? Because he got deep enough into the season where it's like, oh, Aller hasn't thrown an interception yet, hasn't, still hasn't thrown an interception, where now maybe it could get him a little more loose? Well, some of these narratives, uh, at least, were stymied. You know, he, he did throw that force. Um, you know, he threw a long touchdown pass, which people ha have been waiting for. But, um, you know, back to your point, you know, uh, it was an ugly scene up there. I mean, th they were booed four or five times in the first quarter, and this can't be a prelude to what you're going to get against Michigan, your next big home game. So they have a lot to figure out. I think the program with James really relies on so much emotion, and, and it's positive emotion when things are going well. And when they're not, and evidence his record and their performance after that first loss. So... It's really something that has to be figured out. And it's a good thing they at least got the win because, you know, under Franklin, they were 16 and 16 coming off of a loss. So, you know, they didn't let that next loss uh, into this game. And as Mark, as you said, you, that would basically would have been Ohio State beating them twice. Yeah, well, I think it, it ultimately the better, the more talent and better athletes won. I mean, Massimo, I, I, I agree that uh, Indiana going very conservative played into that. But... You know, the defense did step up after Aller's um, interception and had, a, had, a, had a, 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 a stop, I mean, held him to a field goal. And then for Aller to bounce back, I don't know that I would say that that interception was a good thing. I think what was a good thing is that he was in a position where they had to go to the length of the field and score, and he didn't panic. Right. And he was able to make the proper read and hit Keandre Lambert-Smith. I wonder if that single play, that was their longest pass play, uh, since Lambert Smith against West Virginia. Right. The first time they scored from, from their own territory si since then. And I just wonder if that could be the play that kind of lets everybody take a deep breath and, and realize, you know what, they can score fr fr from farther out. Yep. So I think for Aller that that was actually a good sign. And then for the defense to, to, to deny Dennis Sutton to drop mm -hmm. the hammer at the end, I, that wasn't the way you want to win that game but they came through when it mattered the most. Sometimes a win is a win, and we'll have to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to discuss Aller's performance and the game-winning drive next on Nittany Nation Overtime. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. And by McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back into Nittany Nation Overtime. Ryan Risky joined by Mark Brennan, Neil Rudell, and Massimo Manka. And guys, you know, we finally saw Drew Aller uncork the ball, and there's been so many times this year where we've seen him drop back, and it looks like he's ready to take a shot, and then he does a check down. This time, he just let it fly, and Keandre Lambert-Smith made a play and won the game. You know, I didn't think he played too bad. That, that was a bad interception at the end. He was 20 of 31. He had three legitimate drops. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought he isolated the tight end over the middle a couple times. You know, with those, those plays of the tight end, the two touchdowns, and... Um, and then he also threw one to key Andre Lambert Smith over the middle that was a good play. So, you know, I think the timing isn't great still. The offensive line hasn't helped him at times. He was under pressure, but I didn't think he played too bad. Massimo, the hallmark of some of the best teams that you were on was being in tight games. Mm -hmm. You know, even the great, you know, 86 team. I mean, that team made a living. What did you see in a tight game there that they were able to do to kind of pull that thing out? 
I think they, they kept her poised, and that was, you know, Joe used to stress that all the time. He would say the word poise a hundred times. She goes, I'm poised! <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they showed on that last drive. Uh, they weren't panicking. You know, that was the best part about it is, okay, we got the ball back, we got, just go right down the field and score, and, and they were really comfortable in that last drive. You didn't see anybody being too uptight. And I guess, Matt, how important is it for a team to be able to win a tight game like that? You know, we're... Lately, it's been winning in a lot of blowouts. You know, you're going to have to win those tight games regardless of who you're playing. Absolutely. And, you know, every weekend you see upsets. Look at what happened to Oklahoma last night. And, and, and that's, you know, you mentioned 1986. Also, 1985 when we went 11-0, right. we had so many close games. Regardless of who you play against, whether it's Cincinnati or Temple or Ohio State or Michigan, those close wins just really build character for your team. And that's what happens those years. And that's why, you know what, yeah, it was a close game. We were supposed to win by 30 points yesterday. It didn't happen, but a win is a win against a Big Ten opponent, and we'll take it. We're 1-0, and and let's go forward. Yeah, that is something because they haven't had to show. I think they didn't do it at Ohio State, but they haven't had to win a close game and show that they could do it. Zane Durant said afterwards he thought the defense would benefit from you know, kind of the, the torching that, that it took uh, going forward because there are going to be another couple close games, Absolutely. you would think. Well, I do th I'm sorry, Ryan, but I do think you can give the defense the benefit of the doubt because it's played so well all season. But the offense, I mean, you know, listen, we can talk about the passing game all you want, but that rushing game, mm -hmm. you know, this is the third time they've faced a, a Big Ten opponent that was last in the conference in rushing defense at the time of the game. And they have underperformed every single time. At what point is, is that the that that's what this team is? I mean, 3.1 yards per carry against a team that gave up 274 rushing yards to Rutgers, and Rutgers had 39 passing yards. I mean, this this ground game is an issue. I mean, we could talk about Aller in the passing game. This ground game is an issue. Yeah, absolutely. And you know. Uh, that's where the booing was coming from in the first half because they couldn't convert short yardage situations. I think that offensive line is in a state of regression. You know, they're not as good. I mean, how, how did we hear at the beginning of the year that it was the best tight end room in the country, the best running back room in the country? They thought the offensive line, same thing. Um, I don't know if it was a false sense of security or what. I mean, and you know, as you said, Neil, earlier in the show, you know, more questions than answers. Like, it's the same running back room. You still have Nick Singleton and Catron Allen, two highly regarded running backs. And, you know, after the way they just ran last year, you know, it's just like, wh what changed? You know, what's different? Longest run was 12 yards. And that's just not good enough. Well, last year, we're used to seeing them break off 40 and 50 mm -hmm. yard runs, and they kind of did it so consistently that maybe. I think we just kind of got used to it. And now this year, you know, where, where did it go? What happened? I think we're saving it for Michigan. <laughs> That's good. That <laughs> is an awesome. They've been saving stuff all. <laughs> First, we were saving everything for, for Ohio State, right? So yeah. keeping it in the back pocket. Well, I'm going to throw two guys out last year that were real leaders on that line and excellent blockers. Okay, that'd be Juice Scruggs, who would have been the, co the commander there in the middle, and Brenton Strange. I mean, yeah. you know, he was, uh, you know, for a while, maybe your best offensive player, or a really good target, but also a really good blocker. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's, t you know, every team goes through, you know, losing players, except like nobody's really kind of molded into those roles to take, especially from the blocking standpoint. You see, I think generally speaking, for most of the year, they've been really good in pass protection. And I think what's happened now is that people have figured out that they're not able to run the ball. And now all of a sudden you can't do that. And now they're starting to get after Drew Aller. So at some point, forget about the X's and O's. It's about this O-line and this running game in general. The tight ends, everybody toughening up. You know, the one guy that, that I'll give a shout out to is Katron Allen. Yeah. Because that guy, he's running without blocking and making his own yardage. But Singleton looks like a different back. I mean, I think it's fair criticism at this point that he just doesn't seem to have whatever that is. Now, is that gone, or is he just overthinking things, or what? But there, e even with the blocking not being great, it seems like there are some times where he's just not quite hitting the right hole or making that last guy miss, or on a kick return, he's tripping over somebody. Well, the, the, the kicker. Yeah. Massimo's uh, brother tackled him. <laughs> <laughs> right? How many tackles did you have, Massimo? <laughs> I had a few. There you I, go. I, I stopped Paul Palmer from scoring a touchdown. Oh, there you go. That's legit. That. Check <laughs> yeah, that out. Yeah, that is. <laughs> you know, and I think one thing, you know, with Singleton and Allen, one thing that they were <laughs> talking about all offseason <laughs> was 
you know, they added more weight to try to be stronger so they wouldn't be able to go down. Could they have lost maybe a half a step, you know, from getting that explosive play? Because there's been a lot of times we thought, oh, there he goes, and then they're getting tackled. It's weird because you see 40-yard dash numbers, and that wouldn't, it wouldn't suggest that that's the, the case. But something is going – I don't think Allen, I don't think he's any different than he was last year. I think he's yeah. just a guy who isn't going to beat you with the speed. He's going to run through you. But with Nick Singleton, yeah, I mean, it's just, something just doesn't look quite right there. Yeah, well, they got him on the edge last year, you know, and maybe, like I said, about strange. They, they were able to free him. Allen was a step away two or three times yesterday from big gains. Uh, they only had one 40-yard gain going into yesterday. It was the least number of explosive plays in the country. Yeah, they've been a step or two away all season. You know? <laughs> okay. I mean, both of those <laughs> backs. Have and we've been saying that all season. And anyways, we're going to take another break. and we come back, we're going to discuss what the season expectations were before the season and how they played out to this point. Don't go anywhere. Nittany Nation Overtime ret returns. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Monarch Cleaners. For all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning by Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. And by Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive-through, one-stop beer store. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back into Nittany Nation Overtime. Ryan Risky joined by Mark Brennan, Neil Rudell, and Massimo Manka. And guys, you know, before the season, expectations were sky high. Penn State's coming off a Rose Bowl win. They've got Drew Aller, this highly regarded five-star recruit, coming in. And after what happened in week one, Aller, 325 yards, three touchdowns. It seemed like the sky was the limit for this team. Do you think maybe we came in with too high of expectations for what this season could have been? Well, I mean, it's going to boil down to one game now, isn't it? I mean, unless something crazy happens. But, I mean, I know that, that I picked them to be 11-1. and one. Neil, I forget what your pick I was. Did, yeah. I did. I was 11-1 yeah. and one as well. Yeah, so I think they're on track. And that's the thing that's probably driving people a little bit crazy is that you can see the potential there. You can see the potential. And especially, again, I, I give, I'm not saying I give the defense a pass, but it, it, to me it's understandable that you're going to have one flat game. But I just don't – I thought this offense, there was going to be so much more to it than what was seen. And I, I know that you could, you could maybe hang your hat on the fact that they haven't had that second receiver step up. You know, Harrison Wallace got banged up uh, yesterday, and it looks like he might be out for a while. I don't know for sure, but when he's walking around in a sling. Right. Uh, but that's like one area. And I just, yeah. for them not to have their offense clicking at this point of the season, I do think it gives you pause for what this team is capable of doing. Yeah. Sometimes it looks bland at times. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Listen, I, I know we're 7-1. and one. <coughs> We're talking like the season's already. We're talking about game 11 or 12. We still have four games left. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt, right? Let's just see what's going to happen. Obviously, Michigan is going to be huge. It's going to be a huge game for us, for the program. Realistically, if you told us, you know, we would win one of those two games, I'd be happy with that. Let's finish 11-1. and one. We still have a long way to go. And let's hope that we put it all together in the next You know, there's going to be a lot of emotion. It, you know, yeah. I don't want to presume too much or give away my pick. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. uh -oh. But, Ooh. you know, I, I still th hey, is. Penn State's only going to be a, probably a three-and-a-half, four-point underdog at home to Michigan if, if things stay on course. And there's going to be a lot of emotion in that stadium, so we'll find out. Um, but I just don't think they have a real identity of who are they. You know, I touched on it earlier with these offensive groups that everybody overrated, including themselves. But I just don't, you know, I thought they'd be more of a, you could count on them in the clutch, power running. They weren't able to convert those early first downs, even against Indiana early in the game. And you're putting too much pressure on your, I think we're seeing now, as much potential as he may have. Uh, they put too much pressure on Aller. And I just don't think they know who they are. Sometimes you wonder whether James and Yersich are on the same page in terms of the coordination of the offense, what they want to do, how decisively would they want to do it. That goes back to last well, week. Well, the one thing that the one advantage they'll have against Michigan is that the spy that Michigan allegedly right. had left at halftime of the UMass game. Right. So he didn't get all of those things. So maybe <laughs> Penn State's offense will get going. But you know what? I would like to address <laughs> one thing, if you guys don't mind, regarding the fans. A lot of talk about the booing. Uh, you know, listen, these guys, these kids, a lot of them are making a lot of NIL money. 
and th this kind of comes with the territory. You're, you're a quasi-professional athlete at this point, and I'm not saying it's right, but I think th this is one of the unintended consequences of all this NIL money that's going around, is that people are now looking at these kids differently maybe than they used to. They're looking at them more like professional athletes, and they're probably more apt to boo. I mean, this is a six and one team, and they were getting booed in their own house. You know, then another thing to throw in is like how high the expectations were. You know, yeah. they, we were expecting a lot more from this, and especially after West Virginia, it looked like everything was clicking. And now, you know, to, we don't really know who's to blame right now. The receiver group, you know, guys haven't really been stepping up. We've even heard James saying, you know, receivers need to finally go up and make a play for Drew. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't like the idea, even though they're getting some, and I'm sure it's more than spending money. Some of these guys have have deals they represent and, and whatnot, and you wonder about the whole undercurrent of a lot of that, especially after you take a loss. But I think most of that booing is just uh, not, uh, aimed at the coaches, number one, more so than the players. Well, I think also, I guess Mark's point out, you know, with the NIL money, you know, they are getting paid, and I think, you know, that adds to more expectations, and then people are getting more frustrated. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those situations where it, go, it does, I think part of it does go back to the expectations, Ryan, where people thought that this team was going to be at a different level. But at the same time, as Massimo said, you're 7-1, and one, everything is still there for you. So I think the key is we could sit here and talk about it all we want. The key for them is in Lash building, be happy that you survived that game and then try to kind of coalesce and figure out what you have to do, especially offensively moving forward. I think, the, yeah, the most important thing, just keep trying to get better. You got Maryland next week, then you have the gauntlet of Michigan in the following week. And, you know, the season is still in front of you. Right. You know, Absolutely. you still kind of control your own destiny based on how some other games go. Yeah. Hey, it starts at the top, too, though. And, I mean, I think James, uh, you could see this week he – just was a lot shorter with certain situations in his media dealings. And I know the Ohio State's questions went on deep into the week, and uh, he endured them. You know, I give him credit on Tuesday. Um, uh, but I, I just think the, the whole uh, confluence of um, the way that game added up really took a lot out of them. Yeah, absolutely. And anyways, we're going to take another break here on Nittany Nation Overtime. Up next, we'll crown our nitwit of the week. Does Brennan keep winning? We'll find out next on Nittany Nation Overtime. Don't miss a minute of Nittany Nation Overtime, now also on Apple and Spotify. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Brent Kogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you by Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona, by Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs, candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. All right, welcome back to Nittany Nation Overtime. Before we get to the nitwit of the week, I want to touch on the special teams, which, Maswell, this is a unit that has progressed significantly since week one. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I love watching these guys in, in, in warm-ups. Uh, the punter, I think, is doing a, a great job. Riley Thompson, yeah. name. And he's an Australian guy. He's a little unorthodox because he kicks the ball end over end, but he's been very, very, very successful, very consistent. And I also like the place kicker, Alex uh, Falcons. It, he, has, he has a really nice motion, really nice technique, and he's really come together. He had a nice 50-yarder yesterday. And let's not forget our big kickoff guy. My goodness, he hit yeah. one yesterday, almost went into yeah. the stands in the student <laughs> section. So he's really improved a lot in his kickoff. It's a unit that struggled at the start and has really <coughs> improved. Now, let's get to the nitwit of the week. Does Mark increase his lead on the rest of us? Let's find out here. Oh, looks like Andrew came in clutch for me last week and got the win. Good job, Andrew. Yeah. I don't even know. Do we have a magic number? I don't think we have one yet. No, not yet. Okay. Mm -mm. Yeah. Good yeah, luck Mark was running away with it. We're starting to gain some ground on him now. So, I guess the you. fact that I have to pick, I have to make pick first now. Yeah, there's yes. no, no guessing about it. All righty. Well, I'm going to go Penn State wins this one 34 to 13. Yeah, listen, uh, Maryland looked really good early in the season, and then, as has been the case for the past however many years, just kind of things start to fall apart. So 
I, you know, I think Penn State is going to learn from this Indiana game and come out and play really well, force a bunch of turnovers, and I look at uh, 31 to 17 Penn State. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me land in the middle of that somewhere. Uh, you know, they do have a good quarterback who has an, uh, a win over Penn State on his resume. Um, hey, they got to shake this off. I gave them too much credit last week in thinking they would. But I'm going to say Penn State uh, 33, Maryland uh, 16. I'm going to go back to 1985 nice. and when we beat them by two points. <laughs> I think it's going to be a close game. I really do. I think Penn State's going to win, but I think uh, like when 85 – Alex Falkins is going to have a game-winning field goal. I really believe it's going to be a close game. Maryland's going to be ready for us. I mean, at some wow. point, you know, you might have to win a game with a game-winning field goal. So that brings us to the end of the show now. Penn State defeats Indiana. They improved to 7-1 on the season. Up next is Maryland. Make sure to tune in next week after Penn State takes on Maryland on Nittany Nation Overtime. Thanks for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Overtime. Tonight's show is brought to you by DeLeo Games, Sisney and O'Donnell, The Student Bookstore, Joel Comfort Toyota, Legends Power Sports, and Belding and Mall. The Nitwits have been brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning by Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Brent Kogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By NovaCare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Harry's Construction. If you can dream it, we can create it. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. Your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror. Featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.